Greetings to you, my friends, in the most precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us today in this journey of hope with WYTV7. I pray that the Lord would bless you today as you listen to this message from God's Word. And also we encourage that you tell others about this. And we would love for you to support this ministry in whatever way you can, through your finances, through your prayers, and by writing to us and encouraging us. We will be more than happy to hear from you. Today, before we study from God's Word, that is from the book of Philippians, I'd like to just bring to your notice a few things about the Bible and about who Christ is. The Bible says in Psalms 84, verse 11, The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he uphold from those who walk uprightly. You know, when you talk about the Lord and when you talk about the cross, there are three words that came together at Calvary. The first one was justice. The second one was mercy. And the third one was grace. That is, three words that came together at Calvary, justice, mercy, and grace. Justice is getting what we deserve. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. Let me repeat that again. Justice is getting what we deserve. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. But wait a minute. Grace is more than that. Because it is the grace that gives us the great cost to the giver. It is not cheap. Grace cost life of God's own son. Jesus gave freely of himself in agony and blood. Did you know that grace has to chase us down? If God did not run faster than us, we would never be saved, my friends. Grace today seeks to give to Val and the wicked people that which they don't deserve and can never deserve. I pray today that you will understand that it is the grace of God that saves us. Thank God for his mercy. Today we would like to study getting good out of bad. Now, of course, you've heard why does good thing happen to uh, bad things happen to good people? Well, to rephrase that, there's no one good except God. So we should not even listen to that theology or psychology, pop psychology that tells us, why do bad things happen to good people? Friends, none of us are good. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Today we will study from the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 12. That is Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, Paul is writing this to the Philippians. But I would ye understand, brethren, that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. You know, it is important that we pray every day. We pray before our program. We pray during our program. And we ask God, Lord, we come to you today with the realization that we have sinned in so many ways, both in things we have done and in the things that we have failed to do. We confess this sins to you today, Lord, and we ask you to forgive us in Jesus' name. Now we're talking about Paul. Paul longed to go to Rome to preach the gospel. When we study the life of Paul, Paul kept telling the people to pray that God would take him to Rome. Because he had a long desire, a burning desire. He had a burden for the people of Rome. So he longed thus that God would take him to preach the gospel like he has taken him in many other parts of the world. By the way, did Paul go to Rome? Yes. He did go to Rome. 
but he was there as a prisoner. He made use of his time by writing letters to the churches while he was in prison. If you're children of the Bible, did you know that book of Philippians is known as a letter of joy? You think about it. He's writing from prison. Not much joy around. He wrote to his Philippian friends about how God has enabled him to turn the bad that people intended in his life for good of the gospel and for good of the salvation for many. Paul's personal situation was bad. He was imprisoned. But his spiritual condition or situation was good and strong. Friends, do not look at circumstances to bring hope. You need to look at Christ who is the Lord of all circumstances. He was preaching the gospel sitting inside the prison in Rome. Paul said to his friends that what has happened to him resulted in the furtherance of the gospel. My prayer today is through this Journey of Hope program that you too will say that whatever has happened to you or whatever will happen to you will be for the furtherance of the gospel. Even though in prison, Paul had been allowed to arrange his own living quarters until his trial. Now, when we study the life of Paul, he was chained at all times at all times to a Roman soldier. And we can be very sure that the Roman soldier who was chained along with Paul heard the gospel several times. Paul's shining example has served as a sense of inspiration for all Christians around the world since then. But we're talking about getting good out of bad. The method of getting good out of bad can be seen in book of Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. I'd like for you to follow with me. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifested in all palaces and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. In other words, even in those days, there were some people who was just using Christ's word or using the means of preaching to create hatredness even among the believers. Verse 16, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but, other, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Verse 18, but then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. Paul is telling us how can we rejoice while we are having a situation that does not look so happy. Some of you may be going through some sickness. Some of you may be going some, through some health problem. I want to encourage you, listen to the words of Paul while he is sitting inside the prison. Paul rejoiced because Christ was preached. And gospel was furthered while he was in prison. This was done in two ways in the life of Paul. Paul's witness to the guards of the palace. The second thing he did was preaching of Christ by others. He was thanking God that he had the privilege of preaching the gospel to those who were chained with him. And he was also praising God for those who were preaching the gospel. Sincerely, the others who preached Christ did not always do it out of good motive. Some preached Christ sincerely. Some preached Christ in opposition to Paul. 
That is why he said in verse 16 that whatever they were doing was increasing the intense of his time in prison. In any case, Christ was preached. Bad is turned to good when we use it as an opportunity to witness for Christ. I'll repeat again. Whatever bad you're going through, if you use it to witness to others about Christ, it will turn out for your good. In other words, when you're in the hospital, there's a nurse that comes to visit you, to check on you. You should ask her, do you know Christ? You should pray with her. How about the restaurants? Before you pray for the meal, why don't we ask the waiter if she or he has a prayer request and maybe pray with them? Friends, people out there are watching us, how we live from Monday through Saturday. Because they sure don't believe what we said on Sunday. The world out there is looking for us who would use the bad opportunity to preach Christ crucified and him glorified. This can be done in several ways, not just because Paul was in prison that he was able to do this. But we too can do it in several ways. The witness to Christ as personal savior. While chained to Roman soldiers, Paul surely gave witness to his Christ, to his personal savior. That is our privilege. We can do that too. What difference did it make? Did it really matter if Paul preached about Christ or not? The Roman soldiers to whom Paul witnessed, I'm sure they accepted the Lord while Paul was in prison. And I'm sure when they were transferred from that prison to the other prison, they became the witnesses of Christ. What an honor. You're put in prison so you would not preach the gospel. God allows the soldiers to be chained to Paul. Paul preaches the gospel. By the way, faith cometh by hearing and hearing cometh from the word of God. Paul is sitting in prison, glorifying Christ, thanking him for his imprisonment. In other words, Paul is saying, I praise God for my chains. How was the gospel furthered? The gospel was furthered when he started proclaiming to the soldiers in prison that Jesus Christ is my personal savior. He gave all credit to God. Not only did he talk about his personal savior, the witness of the reality of God was so real in the life of Paul. While suffering hardships, Paul could give witness to the reality of God in his life. No one could face suffering and deprivation without sharing his or her source of strength. Every one of us needs source of strength. You need it. I need it. When we go through trouble, we need the source of strength. While he was in prison, I'm sure the soldiers must have asked, what is the secret of your joy? What is the secret of your strength? For Paul, it was a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Friends, Christianity is not a religion. It is a personal relationship with Christ. It is to know him personally, not just know about him. The reality of God's presence was so real in the life of Paul that the soldiers could see it very clearly. You know, when everything is going well, it is so easy to praise God. It is so easy to sing hallelujah when everything is going well. But when things do not go well, can you say that rejoice in the Lord always? Again, I say rejoice. Friends, if you want to know how to turn good out of bad, you need to know Christ personally. Only Jesus Christ can give you the power, can give you the strength 
to turn whatever people meant bad for you, for your good and for his glory. Not only was Paul very clear about who his savior was, not only was Paul very clear about the presence of God was the source of his strength in his life, but there was also the witness of the character of the Christian that he was, was a great witness. While chained to another individual, one has the opportunity to study the other one's character. You know, a lot of people can say a lot of things, but if you really want to know who they are, ask their family. Ask the people of their church. Ask the people who they work with what kind of a Christian, what kind of a believer they are. The soldiers were able to discern Paul's godly character. When he was chained, he could have said a lot of bad things. He could have cursed the Roman Empire, but he didn't do that. I love Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. The brethren, whatever has happened to me has happened for the furtherance of the gospel. You know, friends, I too was put in prison for preaching the gospel. Of course, they'll put any accusation, but the basic thing that they are against is that we preach Christ crucified and him glorified. Are you able to turn bad into good in your life? If not, I urge you, I humbly request you to please make Christ the Savior and Lord of your life. Not only that, be a witness of who is your strength. I can do all things to Christ to strengthen me. Is Christ the source of your strength? How about the character that you have? The people who work close to you, the people who are chained like the soldiers were chained to Paul, can they say, yes, this man is truly a servant of the Lord? Not only do we need to understand the method of getting good out of bad, but we also need to know the means of getting good out of bad. That is in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19 we read, For I know that this, is, this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. If witnessing is the method of getting good out of bad, what are the means? Paul experienced it in this verse. He says the prayer of Christians. Paul was dependent on the prayers of fellow Christians. If you're a Christian listening to this program, and if you do not go to church, friend, I urge you, I encourage you to go to church. I encourage you to hang out with believers who will strengthen you. Paul said, I'm thankful for your prayers. I'm thankful for fellow Christians who are praying for me. Intercessory prayer is one of the greatest privileges of Christians. We can pray for strength for one another. We need one another. The Bible says, bear one another's burden. Love one another. Only in Christianity are we taught to pray for one another. You know, I love this. People all over the world write to us and say, would you please pray? Friends, it is an honor to pray for you. It is an honor to pray for others. Paul is saying in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, I thank you for your prayers. Because of your prayers, I will be fine. Because of your prayers, the Spirit of God will work in my life. We can pray for strength for one another. We can pray that bad situations that we are in, that God would turn them for our good and for his glory. Not only will he get the prayers of the believers, he says because of their prayer, he will also experience the power of the Holy Spirit. The second means that how we can turn bad into good, we need to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God's power, my friend, can make 
any bad situation turn out for your good and for his glory. No matter how, the, how bad the situation may be, no matter if you're in prison, no matter if you just found out that you have cancer, God will give you the strength that you need to go through the trial that you're going through. Finally, not only the method of getting good out of bad is a witness, not only the means of getting good out of bad is by the prayers of fellow Christians, fellow believers, but also the motive for getting good out of bad should be very clear. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, by the way, friends, God has not called you and me for the ministry of defense. He has called us to be the soldiers of the cross. The motive for getting good out of bad is that Christ may be magnified to the life of the believer. What is the desire? Paul clearly expresses his desire for the magnification of Christ through his life. Whether by life or by death, he wanted Christ magnified. Is God real to you? What is the definition of turning everything for good when the situation is bad? Paul summed it up in verse 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, friends, if he lives, he will continue to magnify Christ. If they kill him, he rejoices over the fact that he will enter into the presence of his God. He was willing to follow the will of God. You know, can you imagine being the enemy of Paul? It must have been very hard. This is man. We can let him go out of jail because he will go to every street corner and preach Christ. We can kill him because he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That means if we kill him, he will gain the presence of Christ for all eternity. You know, the, one of the greatest fear we have is death. When Jesus comes into your life, when he becomes the savior of your life, he will give you victory over death. He will give you the assurance that when you die, you'll be with him for all eternity. You know, we go to many restaurants, friends. There's a sign out there, or most of the time the people, when we check in into the restaurant, they'll ask you two questions. Smoking or non-smoking? I like to add something to that. Eternity, your choice. You want a smoking session? Then you do not accept Christ because it will be smoking in hell. But if you want non-smoking section, you need to know Jesus Christ personally as your Savior and Lord. Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To die that will allow him to enter the presence of God, his Savior. Some of the things that are happened to us are bad. But the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at work, will turn this situation for our good and for his glory. God can and will enable us to get good out of bad when we are his. You know, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, I thank God upon every remembrance of you. Have you ever thanked God for remembering certain people? You know, many years ago, we were able to rescue a girl from the streets of India 
whose mother had killed her father. That means the lady had killed her husband. And I'll never forget once we were able to bring this girl of theirs into our hope home. And I asked her, will you become a soldier of the cross? She immediately told me, she said, no, I want to become a policewoman. I asked her why. She says, because I want to make sure that my mother spends rest of her life in prison. Because I want my father, who was killed by my mother, to receive justice. Well, if you think about it, it makes sense looking at it from a child's perspective. She stayed with us for about eight years. Then she graduated into full-time ministry. I asked her on her graduation, I thought you want to become a policewoman. She said, no, sir. Being here, learning about Christ, learning about the love of Christ, I have learned to forgive my mother. Now, would you please help me to get my mother out so that I can serve the Lord with her? That is the transforming power of the gospel. I encourage you, friends, if you do not know Christ, you cannot, you cannot turn bad into good. Only Christ can help you with that. Paul could not have done it. Paul did not have positive attitude. And that's the reason he was able to write Philippians. No. Positive attitude is good. But positive attitude will not save us. Positive attitude will not turn bad into good. Only Jesus Christ will turn bad into good. He says, sir, I want to know him. If that's your desire, friend, today, will you pray this prayer with me? With your heads bowed and eyes closed. Lord Jesus, I pray that you save me. Forgive me of my sins. I seek your grace and I seek your mercy. I seek your justice. Forgive me, Lord. Help me that whatever situation I'm in today, I know it is bad, but with your grace, I can turn it for good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, I encourage you to please write to us. That is Hope Givers International, P.O. Box 8808, Columbus, Georgia, 31808. We look forward to hear from you. We seek your prayers. We seek your support that the Lord of heaven would enable us every day to share this blessed gospel to those who have never heard of him. Thank you for listening. God bless you, and we wish you a blessed day ahead.